Hello. 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 My name is Chronicle. I run Chronicle.com in Ear Fidelity, and I currently host and maintain the <clears throat> world's largest, world's largest, world's largest public database of headphone and earphone measurements. That has been kind of my channel's pseudo intro for a very long time. And while today it still remains true, I'm going to be doing something that is going to be potentially very stupid, but also absolutely necessary at the same time. I'm going to be restarting my database. So if you don't already know, yes, I do a lot of measurements, perhaps too many to some people, to the point where now I currently have probably the world's largest, again, public database of frequency response measurements of both IEMs as well as headphones. Today I do measurements on two systems, the first of which would be the IEC 6031H-4. Yes, it's a mouthful, I know. This is a clone coupler, the one that I use for my IEM measurements database currently totaling at over a thousand measurements at this point. The second of which, which I actually recently just broke, unfortunately, the GRASS 43AG-7. This currently uses a uh, Hold on, this is scary. This thing costs $9,000, I don't break it. Nice. This is the GRASS RA0402. It is the most expensive component in the GRASS 43AG-7, simply because it houses all of the very advanced things that relates to the simulation of the inner ear. But at the end of the day, this as well as this are both based off of the same standard, IEC 60318-4. So the big question now is that now we do have a new standard, a new piece of equipment called the Bruin Care Type 5128, which unfortunately costs a lot of money, oh, Jesus Christ. I purchased the Grass 43AG-7 back in 2020 and was also kindly sponsored by a few enterprising entities, one of which would be Headphones.com also the sponsor of this video. Headphones.com is the premier audio online retailer for all of you who are living in the US as well as Canada. Find a wide range of DACs, amps, amplifiers, and would you know it, headphones as well. Apart from being your standard audio retailer, and again, ranging from a wide range from mainstream products all the way to audio enthusiast level things, Headphones.com also has an unprecedented 365 day return policy. So if you don't like your thing, just throw it back at them, it's literally their business model. Go to headphones.com and buy all your audio stuff there. Tell them I sent you. Support the people who support me. But beyond the 43AG-7, which for a while was the most advanced piece of measurement equipment that you could buy, now there is going to be a new standard which is helmed by Bro and Care. Bro and Care has released the new bleeding edge in head simulation, which is now referred to as the Type 5128. And would you know it, I actually placed an order for it all the way back in March. And if you're wondering why I'm making this video right now, they only came right now. So here we go. I should not be doing that. This thing costs like $20,000. So let's unbox this thing for the very first time. Uh, Okay, bubble wrap. Oh my god. Is that it? No, there's still one there. Put this thing down here. This thing right here. I think that's it. Uh, I didn't buy the dummy head because the dummy head is dummy thick and dummy expensive. So I bought instead what was called the Bruin Care Type 4620, which is basically the main components that go into uh, the Type 5128. So if anyone's wondering what you're gonna get with $20,000, I hope this video is enlightening. This is one of the ears. So this is the, oh my God, how do I take this out? What is this? Oh, no, 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 this is the very expensive one. I'm not touching that for now. I am very scared to put like any amount of pressure on this because as you can tell, it's very expensive. How do I pull it out? I'm not gonna put pressure on it. How do I take it out? Bro, in care, please, I don't, I don't tear it out. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna, I'll not settle, I'll settle this later. Okay, so this is the, other ear. So you realize that there's two ears because 
uh, we humans have two ears. So this is a very expensive component. This is <laughs> still okay. <laughs> still okay. I'm fucking. I'm like Linus Tech Tips right now. This is the. Oh, this is the calibration. Okay. Uh, okay. There we go. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So two ears. There we go. This is the cable, which is technically two BNC cables, uh, but this doesn't look like BNC. But they told me that this was BNC. This doesn't seem right. It's not right. No, I no, I'm not. I'm not gonna risk it. No. But this is where the cap is, where you unscrew it. I think. No, you pull it apart. I'm I'm very scared, right? <laughs> ah, there we go. Okay, you do pull it apart. So this goes on like this. But then there's only okay, so there's this ring, right? Yes, there we go. Okay, so there's a ring here. And then what you do is you're supposed to. I am I'm out of it right now. Like this. Yes. Yes. And then you Screw it in. I am such a fucking genius. So this is the 4620 in all its glory, in all its 20 fucking thousand dollar glory. Oh, Jesus. The problem now is that I need like a preamp, which they didn't give me because they were the ones who told me that, oh, this thing, you can plug it in right here and they'll be fine. Clearly that's not the case. You definitely need a preamp. This is clearly not a BNC connection. The other interesting thing right now is that because of the shape of the ear canal, I can attach as well this uh, adapter, which is used for uh, mostly sound calibration, volume calibration. So if, if you have a, like a 94 decibel SPL, like test meter, you attach it to this and then this would calibrate it accordingly. But um, not not today. Why did they give me a BNC connection? Oh, Jesus Christ. Actually, wait, let me just... Can I do this? <gasps> I can! I can do it! I don't need... I didn't even buy this! Fuck you! How much was this? How much was this thing? Oh my god, it's like a thousand bucks. I overspent a thousand bucks. Never mind. Okay. We good. We good. This works now. I think. I hope. So, as you can see, this is my current setup, which is a GPD Win Max attached to a Motu M2 as an interface, as well as a Brew and Care Type 1704. So, what this is, is a CCP. Thing. Not, not that CCP, it's constant current power. So this thing then goes into here, which goes either to this, or now that I realize, you could go into the grass coupler thing as well. So yeah, great. Interchangeability, thank you, industry standards. So what I have to do now is I... There's a process to this which you, Axel, you need to learn. Yeah, so first you have to basically remove all the components, slide it in like this, pull out this in, screw it in like so, and then you do this. And there we go. El Perfecto, I'm sweating like mad. <laughs> so behold, this is the new Ruin Care 4620 slash 5128, depending on who you're asking. The reason why we have to go and like order two pairs is because we can't really just directly flip it underneath. That's, a, that's a, also the reason why I have both ears on my grass setup as well. But besides all that, probably your biggest question would be, hey, Krin, this thing, uh, how to measure headphones with it? Valid question. We need now uh, basically a cheek. Kind of, which is also the reason why, like, the grass, which is unfortunately a bit broken right now, also comes with its own kind of DIY setup that I use to hold the cheek plate up into a vertical position. So I'll be basically doing the same for the Brewing Care Type 4620. So kind of turning it into a 43AG version of the 5128 with kind of a DIY flat plate system that could also be flipped up and as well as stowed at will. That would require a few more days, weeks, months of basically building an entirely new setup. But before I do that, this would be entirely 
entirely appropriate for like doing IEM measurements and the likes, things that don't require a seal around like the cheek area, for example. I'll do some testing off camera. I'm not going to subject my poor camera people to me just fiddling around with this for hours. So uh, first results would be soon. Trademark. Beyond all that, I guess people will be asking as well, why would you want to suddenly restart the database? Why would you even want to change from the IC61318-4? Well, thankfully, I've already done a video on that in the vein of talking or criticizing Linus's approach to all this. And in that video, I talk about the entire spectrum of nerd history regarding the microphones from 2CC coupler to the Zwislocky coupler to IC61318. 0711, IC6028-4, and now with the new 5128. All of that is in that video, but in a general nutshell, the IEC6038-4, or better known as the 711 coupler, is slightly outdated from a, just from research purposes. And being the guy who is a kid, the guy who runs and maintains the world's largest public database of headphone and earphone measurements, a lot of people have also started asking me like, hey, would you be open to doing a new database with the 5128 slash the 4620? And for a while, I grappled with this question. I asked myself like, with such bleeding edge technology that not a lot of people have been using, unlike the IEC 711, which has been around for like 40 years, I guess, and everyone and their mother are using it as well. The problem with going with something like this now is that not a lot of people would understand how to read the measurements, which then goes into the whole circular problem of if no one knows how to read the measurements, no one is starting a database. And if no one's starting the database, then no one is going to read measurements. So I guess the cycle has to start somewhere. And rather than it being other people, why not be it me? And beyond that, I hope you look forward to more nerd shit, more squiggly lines. At this point, I have to invest myself in doing basically three sets of measurements. First, the standard clone 711, then the grass, and now the brewing care. Why do I do this to myself? And now let me just shout out my big money boys. Here are all of your beautiful names. You have subscribed to the $20 tier on my Patreon. And for those who have subscribed to my $30 tier, again, allow me to speak out your beautiful names. Mac Madface, Dennis, Laughing Psychonaut, HK57, TJ Daily, Saswata, Krinagel, Alicia Burrito, Alex, Frit, Andrew, Kevin, Pitt, Vanderwit, Prosy Chronic, and Ember. I. Thank you all. Beyond all that, I, I know I've not been uploading to YouTube quite often nowadays, but you know, it's generally because I have been swamped with a lot of things in the back end. But I promise uh, halfway that in 2023, I would be uploading a lot more, at least trying to keep as much as possible to the weekly upload schedule. Uh, hopefully, maybe, don't hope. But beyond that, I have like nothing else to say. All right, see you next week, kind of, I hope maybe, and you know, don't die. Fuck off.